right. I think I ruined that. Because, um, <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, so my name is Seth Reconner, this is the Weekend Recap. <laughs> Great to have you here. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. Well, alright. So, last weekend was Easter. <laughs> <That's>, okay. <laughs> bro all right hey welcome to weekend recap here we are recapping the weekend which by the way if you're gonna tie <laughs> you're smiling so big already i love you i'm just happy to have you're you here, smiling man. i love it when you smile you make me happy we have great people in this room and if you want to sound like a cool teenager don't use vowels vowels are stupid and that's why it's wknd because <laughs> if you put vowels in there people you lose credibility with anyone under the age of 21 but nobody walks around just spelling the words that they're pronouncing so it doesn't make any sense that you would offer that as advice or wisdom i may i may have had a misstep in how to look cool in front of you like, wait people. i don't know how to <laughs> no, not you talk look cool nobody's disagreeing with you just not spelling so anyway that's how we do it um <laughs> hey i want to first of all we'll kind of introduce ourselves and uh i think it'd be fun if you guys share uh, your unpopular opinion, what is not, what is a, 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 an opinion that you hold that most people are not down with that? It's a different thought that you have than most people. I, it's been fun during this like quarantine season, all of the fun Facebook content I've seen. So there's been so many of these things. I'm like, I'm learning so many things about people because I'm sitting at home just doing nothing but reading people's Facebook comments, you know? So that was one that I've seen a lot of people. It's like, it's interesting. So I'll start. Um, my name is Seth Connor. I am an associate lead pastor at Res. And I think my unpopular opinion, which is not horribly controversial to most, but I think Disneyland is definitely better than Disney World. Like, that's just how it is. So, um, and I don't want to watch Tiger King ever. <laughs> tell us, I know that, tell us about the corn dogs at Disneyland. The corn dogs at Disneyland, as referred to by my friend Ty, are amazing, life changing corn dogs. We're talking hand dipped, crunchy outside, mm. you know? Mm. Mm. They might sell them at Disney World, but I don't know. But I know where they are in Disneyland. Mm. <laughs> Disneyland's great. Sarah, what's your unpopular opinion? And oh, by the way, Sarah has a theme song for unpopular opinions. So why don't you why don't you give us that? <laughs> I don't think I can actually do that because it's from a different radio station. But I'll sing it anyway. <laughs> Come and give us your unpopular opinion. Something up till now that you've been scared to say. Nice. Hey. There we go. All right. <laughs> I think we need, we need a, Marcus is probably gonna have to a cut song that out. for all segments. <laughs> Please don't cut that out. <laughs> okay, I have never been to Disney World, but I would agree that Disneyland is better. I can just you have to it. by I can default. Sense it. Yeah. Uh, my unpopular opinion is that I don't like coffee. Wow. What? Really? Yeah. Um, it's not like like I'll never drink coffee. It's just like I don't drink it every day, okay. maybe once a week, maybe once a month. So when you do decide to drink something you don't like, why do you do that? Um, mostly because it's probably filled with something really sugary, a lot of cream, some whipped <laughs> okay. cream. So you, your coffee is often white. Yeah, and flavored saying. so that it doesn't taste like coffee. Okay. So you, <laughs> but it. if I was going to drink coffee, I would drink it from the table. Oh, Otherwise. that's a good plug. Save yourself. <laughs> but, totally save yourself. I know. Job. I was like, someone's going to watch this and I'm going to lose my job. I don't understand. I'm sorry. Sorry to interrupt. But if you don't drink coffee, how do you get anything done? Yes. Okay. See, that's the thing. Like, I can't relate to people who are like, my day doesn't start until I have coffee. Or like, can I just get this in an IV? Like, I just don't get it. I don't. I don't know. That's probably great. It's that means Holy you're Spirit. not yeah. dependent on chemicals that most of the world is. It's true. It's a drug. So. so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's probably a song st for that. Stay clean. <laughs> Stay clean. Well, I thought that my unpopular opinion would be the most unpopular opinion, but it might have been oh. me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm competitive, um, so I'll take So that. here's my unpopular opinion that I know will lose me friends, but I'm just being honest. Um, Star Wars is just not that great. Oh like I, gosh. I know. I can't believe Sethry will still even sit in a you. room with me after saying uh. that, but, but I have not seen them all. I've seen a few okay. of them. Have Here's what's important. Ones? Here's the Here thing. We go. Here we go. Here's Here the we only go. way. Oh, and <laughs> and if you, you might be about to lose a friend, depending on how you answer this question, oh, so no, no pressure. But when is the first time you saw a Star Wars movie? So I think I saw, I don't even know which ones they're all called, but the one with Anakin flying. 
Oh my gosh. Yeah, I saw that one. So she doesn't like them. I, was like, <laughs> I don't know, 12 or something. Okay. And so now it just feels super overwhelming to try to catch up okay. on that many movies. The original ones that were made in the, <laughs> yeah, the 1970s to watch those. and 80s. When did you see those? Um, a couple years ago. Yeah. See, okay. <laughs> then then I can I can understand where you're coming from. Okay. First of all, so the one that friends. you saw first, anyone would hate that. Like, except for apparently Joshua Boyette, who said that he did, like, that's one of the, his unpopular opinions, that I he liked episode one. one. Wait a second. <laughs> now you're losing But friends. now I turn them on and All I'm the like, are crossed. The, the words go and the music is on and I'm like, I can't, I can't it's, do it. I think it's one of those things that unless you watched it as a kid, it like, it's, there's something magical and fun and you kind of overlook some of the cheesiness of it. And even like the special effects from the seventies and eighties, somehow that kind of goes away and you're just pulled into the story. And all the people who watch them as children love them. And the people okay. who didn't did not. You watching episode one as a 12 year old <laughs> doesn't even count because that is just garbage anyway. If it but. makes you feel better. We have so much fun at Disneyland and we got to go when the Star <laughs> Wars thing just came out. So we got to go and I was like, this is amazing. That like, ride it's, it's so changed my life. <laughs> it was so great. So just so you know, I still got up early. We ran to the Star Wars. Like, okay. we can still be friends. Okay. But I just can't sit and watch that many movies to catch up on the on all the hype. It's, I think if you didn't see it as a kid, you just can't. You can't get into it. Just like one of my other unpopular opinions, which is that Totino's pizzas are delicious I don't yeah. think if you started eating Totino's pizzas now as an adult, you could possibly think <laughs> that. But because That's I ate them true. since childhood, I'm yeah. like, I'm into this. They're I so like good. them. But people who like today tried it, if you tried it as an adult, like, I'm going to try these pizzas that Seth said are good. You'd be like, he is not good at saying what food is good. But I've enjoyed it since a child, so I'm good. By the I'm way, I wish you guys could hear Marcus laughing at our jokes. Marcus is our amazing <laughs> producer. He works really hard. Yeah. He's, like, making us sound good and... You know. No, I wish you could see Marcus laughing at our <laughs> jokes. When I'm, Marcus laughs at my jokes, I feel like it's a true, it's a true blessing. It's a but it's not as good as when he laughs at his own jokes. You need to be around <laughs> him and hear him do that. Ty, what's I your unpopular it. opinion? My favorite, uh, my favorite part about a Tostino's pizza is the little. It's not Tostino's. It's Totino's. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Tostino's is chips, right? That brand. What is what's Tostino's? <laughs> Tostitos are a chip. <laughs> Maybe if you put Tostino's wow. chips on a Totino's pizza, you could call it a Tostino's. I Ew. need more coffee, Sarah. I need some coffee. That's what I need. Right Right now is the little pepperoni cubes. They're like little pepperoni cubes, and I love weird. them. Totino's, that's what I said. Got them into it. And if you ever go to Disneyland, you should have the coleslaw. I think Disneyland has the best coleslaw on earth, which is saying a lot because coleslaw is not very good in general. That's true. And that could be an my opinion unpopular right opinion is this that I'm about, what, what, what am I supposed to say? I'm about to lose a bunch of friends right now. Yeah. I'll it's fine. Your friend. It's fine. <laughs> Um, maybe all of the kids, especially all the kids at RCS are going to hate this, but I do not like Nutella. Nutella is not even good. It's not that it's bad. It's not even close to good. Mm -hmm. I feel like I don't even, I, I don't like <laughs> peanut butter and, and I would. Wait, that's way more unpopular than that. No, like well, no, Nutella. no. That's you didn't true. let me finish, Hannah. It's fine. It's, it's fine. <laughs> You're thinking about Nutella and how much you like Nutella. I See, don't. I knew what you were thinking right there. Um, it's just bad. So what I was going to say with, I don't even like peanut butter is I would choose a peanut butter and jelly sandwich all day long over anything with Nutella. Wait a second. What about <laughs> peanut butter inside of a dessert like Reese's? Do you like peanut butter inside of Reese's? <laughs> That's peanut butter. I love butter. peanut butter inside of a Reese's. It's and I don't like crunchy peanut butter. butter. I like smooth and creamy peanut butter, but I do not like Nutella. It's like, I just, I think the fact that I thought people, you said you didn't like peanut butter. Well, no, that's Which is that, that's not that wasn't the point. That was just an like an additional statement to how much I dislike Nutella. And Ooh. I think I dislike it so much is because people love it so much. Like that oh. drives my distaste for it because everybody's like, Try this, it's amazing. I'm like, it's spreadable chocolate sauce, kind of, I think. It's not even I that good. I feel like as soon as Thanks anyone so says, Try this, watch this, do this, listen to this, it's amazing already. It can't be as amazing as the person thinks it is because you've already put it like on a pedestal that you just can't live up to. Yeah. So, all right. Except for the Easter service. When you say, watch oh. this, it's amazing. It totally still blew me away. That was a good transition to talk about Easter. <laughs> You're professional. That was way better than me You're just so trying to go cold back into that. All right. So, yes, Easter, <laughs> you can say that was amazing. It was an amazing service. I thought that. Um, our whole team did an amazing job putting it together. So Worship good. was amazing. I thought Agreed. Pastor Jonathan's message was really, really great. And I think that um, 
I, I can just appreciate the true value for the kind of culture that we care about at Res, which is that um, this is not just something for Christians. This is something that we're constantly saying, how does someone who does not currently have a biblical worldview, how does someone who doesn't believe in the Bible, who doesn't have a relationship with God, how do they experience this and how do we speak to that group of people? And I think Pastor Jonathan does a very masterful job speaking to people like me who have been walking with Jesus my whole life. I was absolutely impacted by that message. But at the same time, there's not a single unsaved person um, that I would be that I'd have a hard time sharing that message with because I thought it was so relatable. You know, he wasn't trying to shove anything down anyone's throat. He's just saying, this is worth looking into. He talked about the logic of our faith. He talked about just, there's something about this that you can go and you can see, like if resurrection really has all that it's cut out to be, if it really means as much as it could, isn't it worth looking into it and saying, is this real looking at the actual evidence? So I love that he actually started there kind of coming from that perspective of a, of a skeptic and saying, let's start from that position. Here's where you're at. I get it. Let's talk about that from there. You know, I thought it was so great. Yeah, I agree. I love that he addressed the the perspective of a skeptic because, um, you know, faith isn't just requiring blind, blind faith from people. It's not just requiring you to say like, okay, yes, I believe this and I'm going to sign up for it. And no matter what, I'm just going to believe it. Um, but rather it has a side of, yeah, let's reason through this. Let's let's use logic through this, but then let's connect to the personal side that grows that faith um, and that grows that trust that even when, when you can't see it, you believe it. Right. Um, and I, I personally thought that was great. I agree. I've heard 26 Easter sermons, you know, and I was still so impacted by the service, maybe more than I ever have been before. Um, but yeah, I love just the, just the facts that he put out there and yeah. Um, yeah. You know, things that I, I have heard before, but it was like, yeah, this is reaffirming, yeah. um, you know, that this is like there's facts to to back this up. Like right. this did actually happen. Yeah. So I thought that was great. Yeah. I love the starting point of, you know, you hear about salvation, but really it's too good to be true. And I love that he compared it to like getting 20 million dollars right. because the truth is that we hear it and it's not like. I think subconsciously, it's not like, oh, that can't be true. It's honestly in our hearts, like that has got to be too good to be true. Yeah. And it is one of those things that are like, too, (laughs) seems like it would be too good to be true. But I love that even today you can like test it. You can dive into Mm -hmm. it. Like, check it out. There's no fear in check it out, but go to this source or, or do it this way or be careful of this. It's like, no, check it out for yourself. Like God is real. He will meet you. Yeah. And I just love like the confidence that we can walk in behind the Christian faith. That's like, no, check it out for yourself in your hardest times, in your best times. And personally for you, it's real. And I just think that's that was a really <clears throat> cool like start to the message of it. It sounds too good to be true, but this one is worth checking out. So I loved that. Oh, absolutely. And in, in one of his initial comments, or I think it might have even been point one. I can't quite remember, but he said, um, He said that the resurrection is not only rational, it's intensely personal. And that's Mm -hmm. just a a summary of what you guys have been talking about. And and I think the the way that person that Jesus is so personal with each one of us and each person on the planet just drives drives an individual to search it out. I think that's actually the natural response of a person. Um, Anybody who's walking around not not paying attention to a powerful thing that is is in their life is really not engaging with the ability to decide for themselves if it's true or not. So, um, of course he's personal, but like we, we forget that we, we live in a society that I think forgets how to, how to take things at a, at a ground level, how to be really, um, in the moment, but of course he's personal and, Mm -hmm. and he's the son of God, like God himself sent his son to die for us, um, for every individual. It individual, excuse me, and that is the most personal act of sacrifice that the world's ever seen, and it's incredible. And when he said, when he said Mary, and and yeah. as Pastor Jonathan talked <coughs> about how <clears throat> that was that was uncovering Mary's identity in a way that meant so much to her, that was so moving to me. The fact that he knows us by name and he calls us by name. He didn't come in and need a huge introduction to say, here I am, I am Jesus. Um, he said, Mary, I see you. Yeah. And that's what drew her. It's amazing to me. Amazing yeah. to me. Well, and I really loved that Mary was kind of this, the center of a lot of the story that he brought out yesterday, because I don't think I've ever heard an Easter message that focused on Mary, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and that was really powerful from the from the perspective that he opened up with just about 
the logic of that and even at the time you know how how discredited um a woman's opinion would have been at that time and why would he have revealed himself to her first or you know if if that was the story that the disciples would have made up but then also that side like you were talking about ty that intensely personal thing so you know uh, if you guys missed the message please go back and listen to it but um you know when jesus the the first person that jesus uh, encountered was mary and mary was looking for jesus she was overwhelmed and she was she was sad and and she encountered jesus but like this something about the despair she was feeling something about what she was expecting that was not that her expectation you know that it, it was met differently she couldn't even recognize who jesus was so she's talking to jesus mm-hmm. saying that i don't know where jesus is i don't know where they've taken him and then when jesus says her name suddenly there's something about that revelation that just speaks to her and she mm-hmm. realizes who jesus is because of like the the nearness and the intimacy of the way that he spoke to her mm-hmm. because it awakened who she was like i i feel alive as mary when I'm hearing Jesus talk to me and that same thing came alive and something about that to me, that intensely personal part, really like I felt emotional listening to that and just thinking about from that perspective, because in the Bible, there's a lot of stories about Mary, like Mary's a re a a recurring figure throughout the new Testament. So you see her a lot. So she had been around Jesus quite a bit. She'd spent time with Jesus. She'd seen Jesus do miracles and these different things, spent time close to him, but even still, um, the expectation that she had for him was too small. It wasn't still the, the full picture of who he for of who he is. So even me as a person who's followed Jesus my whole life, you know, recognizing that still after following my whole life, I still can't just put him in a, in a box of this is who Jesus is and this is what he does and this is how he works. Like there's always something new in the way that he relates to me and the way that he speaks to me, you know, but I can't just go out saying, well, I just know how it all works and I know how it is. But having that willingness to say like, there's this active relationship and I could see a new side of Jesus today. I could have a new connection with Jesus today that maybe my own perspective has actually limited, you know, so mm-hmm. powerful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. When um, he was sharing the <clears throat> the story about how Jesus, um, you know, is, I, and I can just imagine that interaction between Mary and Jesus as she's, you know, frantic, uh, searching for, for Jesus and his body, and and Jesus knowing that he's searching for her, and and you know, just how he reached out to her in gentleness, and Mary, yeah, Mary, you know, and just called her by by her name, mm-hmm. um, and not by what she had done, not by you know her wild past but just in that moment met her in intimacy and just spoke her name and it reminded me of when I was pregnant with my son um and actually before I even uh, was pregnant with him my husband had a dream that we would have a little boy named Nolan and we had you know had a son and he woke up from the dream like shook and was like I just had the craziest dream and we had a little boy and this was his name and I was like that's a great name and I wrote it down because I have a million girl names picked out, but boy names are hard. So um, the name of the name Nolan means champion. And I was like, oh, that's great. Like, I think it's super important that that what we name our kids and what we call them every day um, has, you know, a great meaning. Yeah. That we're speaking a blessing over them. Um, and like six months later, I found out I was pregnant and my husband was like, it's a boy, it's Nolan, it's our Nolan. And I'm like, it, maybe not. I don't know. Just keep your mind open. Sure enough, it's a little boy, and sure enough, it's Nolan. Um, and the but the pregnancy was tough. I was really sick, and um, at about twenty weeks, I got a call from my doctor, like on a Sunday afternoon. Just when you normally wouldn't expect a call from a doctor, and she's like, "Hey, need to talk to you about um, you know your ultrasound. We saw some really concerning things, and um, you know I've set up a, an appointment with a specialist, but we see markers for, for Down syndrome, and um, you know we want to support you with how to move forward, and maybe sort of alluding to the fact that you know abortion could wow. be something that that I would consider. Um, and she didn't outright say it, but I was just broken. Um, you know, this excitement that I was having about this new little boy and um, becoming a, a mom and um, seeing my husband be a dad. Like it, it felt like in that moment, everything was shattered, mm-hmm. everything. Um, and I was working in retail at the time. I was in my back room, like just in <laughs> just a wreck. Um, and I couldn't even call my husband because I was like, he won't, he can understand me. I can't even speak right now. And, um, just in the midst of that, I just heard the Holy Spirit say, do, do you remember what I called him? Wow. I've already called him a champion. Yeah. Did you forget? And who are you going to believe? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Whose report do you believe? Come on. Um, and then it was just like. There was just so much peace in my heart, and I called my husband, and I told him, and we cried together, and he was like, 
we're not going to that appointment. Like, hmm. we have peace. We're going to move forward. And if he has Down syndrome, he's going to be the most loved little boy in the world with Down syndrome. And that's hmm. just what it's going to be. But we know what God has called him. We know that before he was even conceived, this was God's name for him. Yeah, I love when Jonathan talked about Jesus saying Mary's name. And she didn't know who it was because she was so in the moment. Um But then he said her name and I just can picture it being this moment where she had heard him say her name before in the past, maybe when when he cast the demons out or or when she was washing his feet or any of those different times. I can just picture that that moment like it wasn't just that he said her name. It was that he said her name like in a way that she could understand. And one of the things that I loved about this weekend's message is um, the, the verses in Luke talk about how she got up when it was still dark. And so if you think about that, like that's still, that's, that's my time with the Lord right now is like, I love to get up in the morning, but I have that fight sometimes that it's like, eh, I'll wait a little bit or stay in bed. But like my richest times with the Lord are when I get up early in the morning and go seek him. And, and I just, it made me think about her getting up when it was still dark, knowing that he was dead, like she knew he was dead. Um, and so it wasn't, her relationship with him wasn't for show. It wasn't fake. It was like, I'm devoted to you. I am going. And then whenever she said um, to the man, where did you take his body? I'll go get it. Like it wasn't this woman victim moment of like, bring him to me. You know, it was like, I'll go like I'll run. I'll chase after him because that was like her relationship with him was was seeking him and pursuing him even in those moments when he felt far away. And I think that for me, that is like the most personal. When I look back over my life, my most personal times with Jesus are the times when I am seeking him desperately, pursuing him, needing to hear his voice, and he shows up, you know? And it's like, sometimes it takes longer than others. Sometimes prayers take years to to be answered um, for certain things, but he'll meet with us even when our prayers aren't answered. And he'll talk with us even when it's not Um, the result that we want. And so I just love the picture of Mary and her interaction with Jesus and how how personal it was, but how personal it can still be today. I think that's amazing. I can't get away from the fact that he said her name and he reached out to her by name. Um, And when I saw that, when Pastor Jonathan said that on on the on the message, I I instantly thought of how kind Jesus Mm. was being. And then the verse where it says it's his kindness that leads us to repentance. And yeah. and I don't think in that moment Jesus was looking for a repentant heart in Mary. Like, I think Mary loved him. Right. Um, but that's what was going through my mind is the kindness of God leads a person to repentance. And, and here's what I believe about God is in every relationship and in every individual in the on the planet, he's looking for intimacy from that individual. He's he's looking for trust and intimacy with me and with each one of you and anyone listening. He's he's really just looking for you to trust him and and to have an intimate friendship with him. And when he said Mary, it screamed intimacy. It screamed connection. And and so I don't know if you're tracking with me, my my mental train of thought is saying it's his kindness that leads us to repentance. And and the history of my life is that it's the it's my repentant heart, meaning I know that I need you. Yeah. Um, that leads me to intimacy, and that's what he's after. And Pastor Jonathan opened up the the weekend online experience of Easter Sunday with the statement: um, He didn't come to save who think he didn't come to save those who think they're strong, but those who know they're weak, yeah. those who know that they need intimacy with him. And when he said Mary, he said. He said, I'm looking for intimacy. So I, I kind of took that message into my own life. Like he is calling me by name. Mm-hmm. Why? He's looking for a friend. Yeah. He's looking for intimacy and relationship. Yeah. Wow. So good. Super powerful weekend. Thank you guys for taking time and sharing those stories. And uh, we'll see you all next week. Thanks for joining. Mm-hmm.